<laughs> That's how it rolls over here at PHP Agency. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here. Hailing to you from the Money Smart Movement Team headquarters here in Oak Brook, Illinois. Or for some of you French-speaking people, it's Illinois. <laughs> but uh, I'm here in distinguished company. Uh, Aneta Kanev here, uh, Regional Vice President of Annuity Sales, is here in Oak Brook. We're very excited to have her here. Came from... Uh, uh, we, we, I know you're in Dallas, Texas, but did you come from another state on your way over here to Chicago? No, straight here. Straight here. Yeah. Awesome. Straight from Dallas. Came here, um, and she is uh, going to light up training tonight. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, to, to, to answer the question, do you know what they're saying about PHB Agency? We're attracting some of the finest people, right? And so uh, I can't mention what former financial company Innate is from. Let's just say she was primed for a change, and let's just say she wanted to be in America. And for better purpose, let's just say it was Prime America. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, um, we're very excited for her to be touring the country. Um, and and you were working with Tony Martinez and Brittany yeah. Pillai as part of our team in yeah. Miami. Tommy Clark. Tommy well. Clark last yeah. week too as well. So, yeah. uh, but we just want to welcome Aneta. Woo! Yes. Hey guys, Woo! excited to be here. Yes. Fresh off the plane. Yes. Just just came right here. So, uh, so you know, we, we were talking before you got here. You know, this is such an interesting era. Mm -hmm. If you're in a financial services world, you know, if you're in the insurance industry, absolutely. Yeah. With social media, mm -hmm. it's such a it's an interesting time because you've only been in this industry for what just sixteen years. Just sixteen years. When you were ten, you ten, started ten years old. I started old. at ten years old. That's started right. ten years old, guys. <laughs> See what happens. You start this business ten years old. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, so what's it, what's it been like for you to see this industry grow? You know, from where you initially started. You know, coming from college, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what was your what was your uh, major again? Recreation management. Recreation I management. Paid money to study recreation. That's correct. <laughs> she paid money to go take gym class. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> and and uh, uh, and never completed because you got recruited into the financial world. That's right. Wow. Big, big, big move. Se seems to uh, seems to happen to the best of us. Yeah, and that's what happened to me. If I don't know my story, I uh, went to DePaul for a couple years to my GI Bill to take my certified financial planning course. No way. Yeah. Okay. And then one year, when you're into it, uh, or one last module, because I took all the modules. My last one is investment planning because I figured that was my strong suit. Right. And um, um, I fin I just finished my tax my tax class. And my uh, my CPA, the, the instructor says, "Hey Matt, how's that thing you're doing?" He says, "Well, I don't I don't know, uh, Jim. It's, I'm making ten thousand a month now. Why is that a lot?" He's like, "Come outside, right. come outside, <laughs> making more money than me." So that's right. And is, is that what happened to you? You started yeah. seeing the, the the beauty of the insurance industry. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your story. How you got recruited into the field? Well, the it, you know never ever wanting to be in financial services. Grew up in a very lower middle class family. Uh, you know, come from a town where it's all bars and factories. You know, and so she's a Jersey girl. I'm a Jersey girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so you just, I think most of us accidentally find the financial industry, right? Yep. So, but um, really fell in love right away. I, I fell in love with the fact that I thought everybody needed this information. Mm -hmm. I knew I needed it. I figured if I could learn this stuff and teach others how to do it and get paid for it, I thought that had to be the greatest opportunity. Yeah. And then you start digging in, like it's the most lucrative industry in the whole, you know, country. So, so you, you got attracted to what you yeah. learned, the financial I education. Did. Yeah, I wow. started with that. But then I really loved the the money, the potential, uh, you know, <laughs> change your life, get wealthy. We make money here? We make money in this industry? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we do okay. <laughs> we die. Um, so, you got recruited into the industry. Yep. Uh, now, m just like most people entering the insurance industry, it's not smooth sailing right away. No. What, what was the What was the most difficult things uh, that you had to learn? Now, going back, yeah. you know, what was the, some of the skill set that you had to improve? The whole salesmanship. Yep. You know, it's it it is the most important part of what we do, and I think a lot of times we try to shy away from that. Like, how can we do this business without selling anything? You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Or how can we do this business without having to deal with people? And so, learning people skills, learning salesmanship, and really being comfortable with that, yep. um, and just overcoming some of those fears and not being scared of asking questions. You know, and just working with people. So, how did you? Uh, how did you? Start breaking down that barrier. Well, number one, you do it, right? You're yeah. kind of scared of something, you got to go do it. Number two, study it. You know, I figured it was a skill set. I don't know why. I, I just am so grateful that that was my mentality. Mm -hmm. Instead of every time I did something wrong or wasn't good, I didn't say to myself, this isn't working. Yeah. I just said, okay, I got to get better. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that way, but I did. And so, 
if I didn't do well on an appointment or, you know, phone calls didn't do well, or I made attempt after attempt and nothing was happening, I looked at myself and say, how do I get better at the skill set? So I would read books, obviously attend seminars, audios, yeah. things like that, just to improve. Because I figure there's people making millions and millions doing what I do. Yep. So I just need to get to that level. I didn't want to go look somewhere else. I wanted to get better at what I was doing. Sometimes people say, you know, this is not for me because I don't like sales. Right. And I think sometimes people... Mm -hmm. equate sales to taking advantage of people. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. How did you how did you wrap your arms around sales and, and that being that definition? How have you defined it? Well, it's funny you say that people don't like sales and so they don't want to do it. It's not for me. Like nobody likes their job anyway. Like <laughs> is your job for you? You know what I mean? Like, do you like what you do on a daily basis? That's a weird thing to relate to. But everything good in our economy is because of a salesperson. If you think about it, everything you own is because somebody sold it to you. Mm -hmm. um, and you have good experiences, you have bad experiences. I, you know, some of my favorite restaurants, I've had good waiters, I've had bad waiters. I don't, you know, judge yeah. the product based on the, the person. So I wanted to be the good waiter, you know what I mean? And just make people love me. And if there's, if I'm, I felt like I had a responsibility because yeah. I knew I was a good person yeah. and I care about my clients. And so if I got good, then I know that there's going to be so many more people helped. Yeah. And if I don't, do this then there could be somebody who takes advantage of you so i saw it as a duty you know a moral obligation to be good at sales because i'm going to help a lot of people you know um in our in our workshops we mentioned that 86 percent of people that are in sales never thought they'd get involved in sales never. And, no. and you're one of them absolutely I, i'm i'm, I'm absolutely. we're both right here in this conversation 100 yep. percent chance that none of us are going to be involved in sales never. but guess what we're in now oh and guess what we love yeah we love it I, you know i've never heard somebody 19 years of me doing this, I've never heard anybody challenge somebody on uh, what you just said about sales. Really? Well, you don't like sales. Or you, do you like your job? No. Well, your job sucks. You're right. Why don't you consider learning something new that'll make you more money? That's it. I've never, bro, I've never heard of that. Brandon, have you heard of it? It doesn't make any sense. I learned something new today. Aren't you glad you came? Mm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you I'm glad you came. <laughs> glad you came. So um, let's talk about women in the business. Okay. You're right? Obviously, you're, you're a woman, yeah. you're multicultural. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, 53% of PHP agency is women, right? 51% of us are la Latinas yeah. right? and she's both. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, speak to the women out there. Cause it seems like there's a lot of women that are actually watching this live stream right now. There's where's Deanne Marcos is watching this. Uh, Kimberly is watching this. Artur Maureen is watching this. Awesome. Edgar's watching this ladies. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'll awesome. see you guys later. I'll see you guys. Later. <laughs> Why are women such a good fit for financial services? Okay, honestly, and I love the men out there too. I'm not like a, this is women against men thing. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a sexist kind of Not even a little yeah, bit, because yeah, yeah. if you knew me, you knew I don't think that way. But this business is made for women. Because mm. think of most people, when we go on appointments and we sit down with clients, who's handling the checkbook? Yeah. Mom's yeah. handling the checkbook, right? right? And so it just becomes an instant rapport thing. Like it's easier for dad to have give a woman the financial plans because he's yeah. already doing that with yeah. mom. Like yeah. it's, we're bred for this. This is just kind of how our society works. So yeah. I think this is a definitely a great business for women. And if you're a man, learn to work with women. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're tough. We'll we'll sleep on glass and chew nails too. You know what I mean? Like Some we'll tough, do this. Tough woman out there. My wife's yeah. a tough woman. Yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because. Uh, some of the most alpha males I've ever sat across. Um, hey, bro, you, you feel this weekend? Can we go to the cigar lounge? Mm. Right? Let's hang out. Let's play yeah. some golf. Let's yeah. let's do something. Can, can you hang out? Can you go? You, hold on. Let me, let me double check with the wife. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tell me why. You're already running this, right? Like, come on. <laughs> See, let alone the finances. There you, know? you go. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So let's let's talk about that. You know, our industry, however, is dominated by. Yeah. 59 year old Caucasian Crazy. male. Crazy. And so what you may not know about PHP agency is that not only are we a 53% um, uh, uh, women, but 51% Latina, as I mentioned, Ooh. mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned guys working together with women. Um, what where are some of the mistakes then that guys make in working with women and how can they improve their ability to work with, with women if they're making this? I mistake? think guys, think they have to treat a woman differently than they treat a man because this industry is going to attract a certain type of woman too. Do you understand? Yeah, like, sure. So if we're attracted to this industry as a woman, yeah. we're, we're, we can play. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And yeah, that's yeah. what I love about our industry. It has nothing to do with gender, age, anything. It has to do with do you want it or not. And yep. it's going to attract that kind of person. Now, every woman obviously is different. I just say, don't worry about hurting our feelings. We're not worried about hurting your feelings. You know what I mean? We <laughs> no, want to sit at the table with you. So, yeah, don't, don't worry about that. 
Yeah, you know, and, and plus uh, women, more women today. I see them. Uh, I think some of the facts were more women today are graduating college more than men. Wow. They're taking uh, leadership positions in for-profit companies. Mm -hmm. They're definitely taking the leadership position in nonprofit, mm -hmm. and also they're taking leadership positions in uh, in government. So, and, yeah, and more women today, I think. Feel, uh, would you think not to make a general generality, but for the most women that you've visited our offices across the country, you think more women are more prone and feel easier talking to a woman about money or does it really matter? I really don't think it matters, mm -hmm. but I do think it's it, women come off as a lot more trustworthy right off the bat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause we're yeah. softer and we're, yeah. we tend to empathize a lot more. Um, and I don't think men need to become softer and empathize more necessarily either. I think men no. shrink, you know, like no. be a soft guy. I'm not right? being, I'm not getting soft, <laughs> soft. Get soft. Um, but I just think that makes it easier right off the bat. Oh my God. <laughs> But uh, yeah. yeah, you know, we have our strengths. I, I think mm -hmm. being a man in this industry is powerful, too, because mm -hmm. there is that authority and there's that trust. You know, women just have their strengths. And I think that's that's the beauty of it. We get to play to our own strengths. I love so, it. Yeah. Well, right. let's look at top income earners at PHP Agency. You know, over six hundred some thousand dollars of income. Marlene Gaetan, mm -hmm. her husband, Jose. Yeah. Power look, couple. Power couple. Oh. You look at uh, uh, Ceci Vargas, mm -hmm. her and her husband. Uh, they are over seven hundred thirty thousand in income. Absolutely. And then, and then my wife and I were over a million dollars in income. So mm -hmm. three, uh, three couples that I just mentioned, yeah. uh, multicultural. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, and couples working together, and and the women are, are playing a uh, equal yet different role. Absolutely. So, yeah. um, so what is your role here at PHP? Um, you were mentioning earlier, uh, six seven years ago, you fell across Patrick's book, I did. The, the Next Perfect Storm. Book changed my life. How did it? How did it change my life? Well, so. I read a lot. I read a lot of books um, and I came across, I don't know how, but the next perfect storm hit me and I read it in a couple hours. I fell in love with the life insurance industry all over again because hmm. of that book, you know, because oh. you, you, you in sales, you go through your slumps, you know, you go through those times. And I was kind of going through one of those where I'm like, is this something I really want to do? And mm -hmm. I just saw the book obviously made me fall in love with what we do for clients, but just as the potential and the wealth building opportunity. And I think the reason we get paid so much is because nobody grows up wanting to be a life insurance agent, right? Yeah. So, who, who goes to school yeah. one day? I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a firefighter, <laughs> soldier, insurance life insurance agent. <laughs> In fact, when I was little, I wanted to be a Tupperware lady, <laughs> but nobody said life insurance, Tupperware lady, maybe, but not life insurance. Right? But so, but that's why we get paid so much. If you recognize that small opportunity. And so that book really opened my eyes to that. And, um, and, and I had started a lot of my trainings and I started following Patrick and Valley Taman and what PHP was doing because even though you were at a different company, absolutely. Well, you know, I, cause I'm, I, you gotta be open to what's, what's growing, what's happening out there. And, yeah. um, and I just fell in love with the fact that, PHP wants to disrupt the industry, which it needs a huge disruption right now because yeah, yeah. people are still un not protected. Yep. They're walking around like as if they're not going to die. They don't get it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like walking around with $200 pair of shoes, but they don't have insurance. It drives me crazy. Yeah. And so I love that about the company. And that's what I saw in the book. And, and, and it changed my life because of my thinking totally adapted to that. Oh, can I ask you something about your previous thought concepts? About life insurance. Okay. Okay. Uh -oh. I can't. I, you know, I'm not going to mention any company. <laughs> uh oh. But there's a certain philosophy out there. <laughs> there's a certain philosophy out there that it's buy term and right. invest the difference. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the way I make the analogy is that you know it's it was, it's a great concept, but it's not the only concept. Right. So, how do you think people can improve? If people are watching this right now, of course, our, our competitors watch us. Hi. Um, <laughs> They're watching us and they're getting their their, their education and info because they're afraid to do their marketing because their financial firm won't allow them to go on social media and yeah. approve multiple times for compliance. But yet here at PHP Agency, we, yeah. we can do these live stream videos here too as well. You know, how, how can people graduate from that just one philosophy of buy turn investing? Because I think they're just painting themselves in a corner. And it's not all their fault, mm -hmm. you know, because you kind of get brought up in the culture yeah. as well, you know, yeah. and every other company has their product that they, you know, try to promote the most. And then yeah. obviously all the others aren't aren't acceptable. Um, you know, I just look at the industry. It's a long standing industry. Mm -hmm. It's a good industry. Yeah. Are there things that have happened to clients that weren't good? Yeah, but I can, I bet you any company has yeah, those stories. Sure, sure. And if there's a product that's been longstanding this long, there's gotta be a reason why it's still available. 
Yep. Um, and one thing that really helped me, or not even helped me, but that, that just connected for me really easily, I'll be honest, I've been following Patrick and, and Jen um, mm -hmm. for years, and I honestly believe they're amazing people, you know, and I told them that actually when we were meeting, kind of oh. discussing this opportunity, and I said, look, I believe in you guys, you know, yeah. I don't I don't think you'd be doing what you're doing if it wasn't the right thing, you yeah. know, and I, I just think if there's good people in this industry that promote different products. I mean, that's got to be a good thing for people as well. I yeah. just think you, you got to educate yourself yep. and there's no cookie cutter approach. You yep. know, every client has different needs for some. It may be one product for some. It may be another product. But, sure. you know, this is where our job as an agent comes in. Yep. You got to do research. You got to know your product. You got to be comfortable with that and understand when to use what. And that's it. That's all it is. Just be open minded to learning. Let's talk about that. What is your role here specifically? So, at my title, I'm a regional vice president of annuity sales. Um, so I get to. So you're still an RVP. I'm still an RVP. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I, <laughs> I, that's the only way I would come over. I gotta keep my title. And I think before you came over, there was no such thing as an RVP or a PhD. It didn't so. exist. <laughs> so I'm revolutionizing. Yes, you are. You're, we're disrupting. <laughs> so you're, so, so uh, annuities. Yes, annuities. So, okay. yeah. so you're, you're, you're educating and teaching you being that support absolutely gotcha. yeah i love annuities i think annuities are a huge huge um you know a, a part of somebody's retirement plan that every i think everybody should have one and um i really believe in the product i always have um sold several million of annuities personally myself so yeah. I, I i've always believed in them um and my role here is to meet all the amazing uh, offices and the teams you know the, the best people in the world are people in this company i, I swear like all the names you mentioned mm. marlene and and jose and rodolfo Our and ceci buddies across the country yeah, doing it. yeah seriously amazing people and so just to meet everybody offer support help bring awareness to the annuity product because i think sometimes people think it's a really complicated product mm -hmm. um and though you can complicate it at the base it's very simple you yep. know so you know sometimes our, our detractors out there they say you know you know php we attract not only you know people that come from different financial companies to to build an agency here mm -hmm. but we also attract people who may be like myself in the military mm -hmm. or they're they're a plumber mm -hmm. or something and they get recruited into our industry and they start with us part time right versus a traditional financial company where they tell them to cut their job right away and right. go in full time. Mm -hmm. um, what's, you know, can you talk to that a little bit? Why yeah. the attraction to part-time and full-time? Why is that a big advantage that we can bring people here part-time? Yeah, I think that's the difference maker is yeah. the whole part-time opportunity because most people that become huge in our industry would never even consider it if they had to leave the comfort of what they already know. Yep. There's no way. And yep. a part timer, let's say you have a plumber who's part time, they're going to relate to somebody who's a plumber mm. in the field. So All much day. better. You know what I mean? Yes. Than somebody who's a full time three piece suit wearing. Grad. <laughs> so yeah. it's the beauty. And plus, we can activate so many more people. We can reach so many more people because we have that part time opportunity. And sometimes people knock it like, oh, you're a bunch of part timers. Really, these are people who are educated. Mm -hmm. These are people who are coming in here learning a new industry, and you can't mess this up. Yeah. <laughs> you can't sit down with a client and screw them over. You can't mess it up. Yeah. You sit down with them. If you don't know what's going on, you bring it to your trainer. trainer. The trainer will walk you through it. So yeah. it's an amazing option for somebody to come in and earn a lot of money, you know, part time doing something great for people where they could never consider that full time. And, and, and they got to be in a position where they're taking ownership yeah. of their own time. And, exactly. Right. And if, if you succeed in this business because you took ownership in it, yeah. and if you don't succeed because you're blaming somebody else and that is a very toxic uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. So um, now you visited uh, some of the uh, offices across the country. Uh, specifically, what are you looking to do here in Oakbrook next day and a half? Other than dancing. Yeah. <laughs> we got pregame coming up. I got to come up with this new move. move yeah, you know it. <laughs> I'm excited to meet everybody. Um, and I'm hoping to. Um, bring some fun to annuities, so, you know, just be like, get people who are never even considered talking about it to after tonight and tomorrow mm -hmm. to be like, you know, what, Aunt Susan, let me show you something really cool. And I have yeah. some games that really bring up the annuities concept better than charts and graphs and all that. So mm -hmm. people who aren't very technical minded or yep. scared of the whole financial part of it, right. you know, we're going to play some tic-tac-toe and blackjack and it's going to explain how annuities work in a much more fun way. So. Recreation management. Remember, I like games. <laughs> I like games. By the way, and they speak Spanish too as well. Could you say something in Spanish to the people out there prospectively looking and improving their finances? In español, por favor. Um, es la oportunidad mejor del mundo ahorita. Eso es el tiempo donde nos debemos de, debemos de comenzar porque ahorita tenemos el entrenamiento, ahorita la compañía está creciendo, eh, la posibilidad de tener ese dueño de esa compañía ahorita existe, no va a existir por siempre. So, tomen ventaja. Esto es el tiempo para nosotros.
Man, that's actually Spanish. I can understand as a Filipino. Ooh. Wow, she spoke Spanish so well. Didn't she? It's like I get. It. <laughs> <laughs> I could. <laughs> no, 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 I know you could. I just, I, yeah. yeah, but uh, we're we're excited. Um, so tonight she'll be here for training. Tomorrow uh, she's going to be sitting down with uh, uh, some of our prospective clients that our agents are bringing here to the office too as well. So, um, who are the people that are most uh, they can take most advantage every time tomorrow, especially when they're talking about annuities. You're talking client wise. Client wise, or, yeah, client um, wise. I, I'd say anybody curious. You mm -hmm. know, um, I believe anybody can start an annuity, but maybe mm -hmm. you have some money sitting around not doing anything. You know, mm -hmm. in money markets, CDs. Um, I had a client once who found out he had money in a safe because he was so scared of the market and yeah. scared of banks. And so anybody maybe who's risk averse, right? Mm -hmm. If you have, or maybe you have accounts in old 401ks, you have old IRAs that haven't been doing anything, you know? A lot of times people get excited when the market does well, but you don't wanna bear it when it doesn't do well, you know? Yeah. So if you've ever considered maybe what happens if I lose my money or if I run out of money, those are people, if you had any of those questions, those are people who should come tomorrow. Answer all you got that. questions, she's got answers, she's here for you. Yeah. So uh, with that being said, well, listen, we're, we're, we're very excited for, for you to be here. There's, there's some people here that's gonna be uh, very excited to, to meet you for the very first time as well. I'm, I'm, I'm meeting a native for the very first time mm -hmm. too as well, but if her reputation precedes her, um, uh, working together with our friends, uh, uh, Hector and Erica Del Toro, oh, organization of Bakersfield. We were just talking about you this morning. Really? They're in a dream team call. They're amazing. And uh, working with uh, uh, Brittany Pelize's team and Tony Martinez's team in Miami. Um, I'm telling you, top-notch uh, people. Yeah. We got Mexicanos and, uh, and uh, uh, Cubanos. Ooh. And Boricuas, ah, right? And what the manteca? Really? Uh -huh. No kidding. Say <laughs> man manteca, manteca in, in Filipino is uh, they say manteca. 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 What the manteca from Guatemala? What, what, what? I'm talking about butter. <laughs> so, it's mantequilla. Mantequilla. It's, it's mantequilla, right? There. So uh, we're excited having um, training for our agents tonight. Here, you will be able to meet Aneda, have your questions answered. Um, this is for a lot of our agents that are part time in the business, learning to become full time and proficient. You know, one of the principles we have in the Marine Corps is be technically and tactically proficient. Mm, I like that. Tonight, this is when you get to be technically proficient, and she'll teach you the tactics of when to deploy your knowledge. Uh, looks like Shan, uh, Cheyenne has uh, loved your training, too. So you were in Tucson. Yeah, Tucson was amazing. It was like 212, 212 team. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Edgar. Edgar is a brand new. Rosie and I are excited tonight. His wife, he's a, he owns a trucking business. Oh, perfect. And uh, they are uh, uh, just got engaged and expecting a baby. Nice. Right. So uh, Cindy, what's going on, Cindy Gil Gilbert, Rome, what's going on, Rome? He said, Anita shocked me when she did her nudie presentation. Espanol, she's amazing. <laughs> Love that. Uh, Richard Ray Cordova, so much knowledge and value Anita brings to our company. I'm very thankful for the time she spent with us in Bakersfield. Yeah, Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. You're right. I, I'm telling you, I, I can't even. You guys are powerful. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, any other comments here? Hey, Anita did a tic-tac-toe. Pat Patricia says she did a tic-tac-toe today for a family. They loved it. Yes. I love you, Patricia. So uh, our guys in Oprah will be learning that tic-tac-toe presentation uh, workshop tonight. Our yeah. tour Marine says we change lives. So right. Jennifer Jones, so awesome. Hello, Matt and Anita. Awesome. Very cool. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you come here nice and early. We start 6.30. Check in, 7 o'clock we start. Workshop begins at 7.30. Um, if you don't know where we're at, we're right here in Oak Brook. If you happen to be watching this in your local Chicagoland area, you're looking for, for an, an opportunity to make some money uh, part-time, you're looking for a plan B. You know, We've both found our plan B. Mm -hmm. We were working on our plan A, but boom, here's our plan B, and our plan B became our plan A. That's right. If you've been uh, overworked, uh, undervalued, underpaid, mm -hmm. and uh, overwhelmed at your job, uh, we'll see you tonight at, right. at 6, 30, 7 o'clock right here in Oak Brook too as well. On the client side of things, if you're like she just mentioned, if you're unhappy about what your finances are right now, you're 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 kind of weary about uh, what may happen in your in your uh, retirement account. Get your questions answered too, as well. And uh, with that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like our page on Facebook, and uh, make sure you uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. If you're watching this replay on YouTube too, as well, and hit the notification squad. Hit that little. Where's that? Hit the little bell down there. It's going to be on the left-hand side or right-hand side. Make sure you hit the little bell down there and no notification squads for any time we upload videos. Boom, you're one of the first people to receive a new video. Make sure you check out our vlogs every Sunday morning, Living Minus Smart, where we combine the life insurance industry entrepreneurship uh, path as well as a veteran entrepreneur path together. The first ever 
vlog on how that merges together called Living Money Smart. And uh, every Wednesday afternoon, uh, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, we broadcast the Money Smart Show. Today's a special edition of Money Smart Show because Nate is in town. And of course, on Friday afternoons, we're helping veterans on Red Fridays. Uh, remember, everyone deployed to make sure you take advantage of the freedom that's been paid for and bought for by our men and women in the in uniform, uh, fighting for our freedom, defending our freedom all across the country, and making sure you take advantage of it in the world of entrepreneurship. Make sure you tune into that show every Friday afternoon at 1 p.m. So with that being said, thanks for your comments. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you share this video uh, with all of your um, your friends on your timelines and the groups you're a part of and uh, what they're saying about PHP agency and what a native's presence here is doing in Oprah. That being said, thanks for tuning in. Bye, guys. Thanks for your comments. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to live smart, and be money smart today. You got it, Brandon? My man.